What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be talking about a prison story time and I've actually been thinking about making this like a series on my channel, Locked Up With, da 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 da. So I was actually locked up with, drum roll please, my baby daddy side chick. I know you guys, but this is just the kind of thing that you're not thinking about when you're using or abusing drugs and running around in that street. So we are going to keep this video laid back today. Hopefully you guys can take some entertainment out of it. But I just want you to know that prison is not cool, it's not fun, I'm not glorifying it, I'm sharing these stories for entertainment purposes only. Don't do what I did, I was an idiot, and I deserved every day of that prison sentence. So, without further ado, let's get into today's story time. So, where do I begin? So, I was locked up in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Now, I should do like an entire like story time about that county jail and the women that I was locked up with in that county jail. I got stories for days when it comes to the county, but I was locked up with a few of my baby daddy's ex-girlfriends or side chicks. So specifically today, we're going to be talking about one of his side chicks. Now, the reason why I knew who she was is because I moved in, apparently, right after she went to jail. Now, I didn't know that he was with her and with me at the same time. This all came out later. And it was just kind of a, it was a pain I had to deal with on my own, you know? You think you're dating someone, but really they're lying to you. And that was just kind of what was going on. Uh, he was going around behind my back and hooking up with these other women. So when this particular woman went to jail, I moved in that same day or maybe the next day and, <laughs> Months later, someone told me that, that he was really into this girl, but she went to jail, blah, blah, blah. So I moved in and all of a sudden these letters started coming from the county jail and it's this girl and he was always kind of like weird about it. Like he would make sure to go check the mail and I wasn't around and it was just strange. But a couple of times I did see her name on the letter and I didn't even think anything of it. Like I never thought it was like concerning or I wasn't like jealous or paranoid because I didn't even know who this person was. It took someone else telling me about this girl for me to learn about this girl. So let's fast forward. I get arrested. I go to county jail. Six months later, after I signed my plea bargain, I took a five-year deal under the 50% law in Arkansas. If you don't know why I went to prison, I will leave it down below. But I had to serve two and a half years. I was pregnant. They sent me to a maximum security prison called McPherson, and then a few weeks later, I was sent to a medium security prison called Wrightsville Unit, where I would then give birth, and then if I didn't get in any trouble, I would stay at Wrightsville, or if I did get in trouble, I would go back to the maximum security, which did end up happening. So I was at this medium security prison for, I want to say, two or three weeks, and I'm in the hallway, and this girl comes up to me, I think we're standing in line for commissary, and it's a very small prison. And I look over and I see her name tag, and I recognize the name immediately. So I asked her, where are you from? And she said, Fort Smith. And I thought, huh, I know who this is. Like, I know already this is baby daddy's ex. So I was pregnant. I was emotional. I was like, oh, this sucks. Like, I thought leaving the county jail and finally going to prison, I would be away from these girls that he had hooked up with or cheated on me with or whatever. That was just drama I didn't want around me. And I remember being really overwhelmed. But I was in prison. And you can't tell people drama or what you're going through or you can't like vent like you're in prison. It's not like college where you're like, oh, I don't like that bitch. Like, no, you can't do that. So I made a mistake, I just wanted to talk about it with someone, and I went up to a girl, and I'm frustrated, and I'm just kind of walking around, like, just annoyed, you know? Like, I just had a chip on my shoulder still at this point. I was just really irritated. And one of the girls was like, what's wrong, New York? And I said, see that girl in that hallway? That's baby daddy's side chick. And I was so annoyed, like, I don't even know why I said something. Well, I shouldn't have. This girl went back to baby daddy side chick and told her who I was and told her I was pregnant with this man's baby. So the program barracks that this girl was in gave her freedom that I didn't have. So this girl was in a program barracks called the PAL program and because of that she would work outside of the barracks a lot or sometimes she'd even come in my barracks for like random things or she'd be working in commissary or just whatever. So she had more free reign of this prison than I did and it just seemed like ever since I realized who she was, she was always around. Like for some reason, I had to see her every day at Chow 
because we were in the same housing unit and housing units go to chow together. I saw her three times a day at least. And I would see her if I went to rec, so I started to stop going to rec, just so I didn't have to be around her. Once she found out who I was, this was the most awkward, uncomfortable thing ever. She comes up to me and she said, are you blah blah's baby mama? And I said, yes, I am. I know who you are. I just didn't want to say anything because I don't need that drama. I don't need problems. And she's like, no, that's, it's fine. Like, I'm so happy for you. I, I can't wait to meet him or her. Is it a boy or a girl? And she starts talking about my stomach. And I said, she's a girl. And I just want to get away from this situation. Like, I don't, I didn't want to be with baby daddy. I didn't want a relationship with him. I just didn't want to hang out with your ex-girlfriend, dude. Like, it was just kind of awkward for me. And I kind of took it personal that he was so dishonest with me. And like loyalty is a big deal for me, you guys. Loyalty and honesty is a big deal for me. I actually find it so offensive if you lied to me because I'm the most understanding person ever. So I just took it like, I had a chip on my shoulder. I was mad. I, I held this grudge for a long time. I have since forgiven him and I have great peace with that, but it took me some time. So this is like, I've been to prison or I've been away from baby daddy for six months. I'm six months pregnant. Like I still had a ways to go. So she's asking me about my baby and that's kind of where I drew the line. You know, I'm like, it's a girl, excuse me. And I, I went to walk away. The next time I saw her, I think it was at commissary or for whatever reason that we're in the hallway and she's telling other women that her and I are like family and she can't wait to meet my daughter who is like her stepdaughter. Just let that sink in for a second. This is a girl that I had no idea baby daddy was sleeping with. This is a girl that he was probably sleeping with at the same time as me. So his side chick, right? And now you're telling everyone that you are my daughter's stepmother? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? So I just got annoyed and I didn't even go to commissary and I walked back to the dorm and I went back to my rack mad. And I wrote about it in my prison journal, which I should totally read for you guys. So now I'm like even more annoyed. Like now you're telling people that you are my daughter's stepmother. And I remember calling my mom and I said like, I'm locked up with her. Like, this is crazy. She's telling people that we're family. This is so weird. I don't even know what to do. And my mom was like, just relax, just calm down. You know, it's not a big deal. At least she's not in the same dorm as you or barracks as you. It's all right, just walk away. And I tried to do that, you know, I tried to just really look inward and I'm like, why does this bother you so much? Why is this bothering you so much? Is it the lies? Like, please just let this go. You don't need the stress. You're pregnant. So again, you don't think about these things when you're running around the street or breaking the rules, but like, you don't know who you're going to be locked up with. And it could be the most awkward, uncomfortable thing ever. And I tried so hard just to calm myself down because my baby didn't need that added stress. Prison's already stressful. I don't need the drama. So a couple of weeks had passed and I tried to avoid her at all costs. If I went to church, which wasn't very often, I would try to avoid her or what have you. So she then started to go to things that I would go to, like NA, and that was frustrating for me. We also got signed up to do a parenting class at the same time, also very uncomfortable. She kept saying that she was like family to me and I didn't want to press the issue. I just kind of was silent about it because there's no reason for me to like you know what I mean? To bite. There's no reason for me to tell you that you're wrong or tell you that you're crazy or like ask you to stop talking to me. I'm just going to be, hmm, okay. And you can tell how I'm feeling by my face. I cannot hide my emotions very well. So she had to have known that I was just getting annoyed, right? I mean, come on. Like, this is, this is awkward. This is weird. So it was just a really tough and very tense two to three weeks where we had the same class and like she would go to NA. One day I was just having a bad day. Inmates have bad days and sometimes it stems from the tiniest little thing, not getting mail or your family, your loved ones don't answer the phone or like you don't have commissary or someone said something to you or someone tried to cut you in line. Like tiny things like that will just irritate you in prison. So one day I went to Chow and she was ahead of me in line. Now this prison made you sit next to whoever you are at in line. Like you can't just pick your own seats or whatever, which is really, really dumb. But just where she was in line, I knew we were either going to be sitting at the same table or she was gonna end up across from me. And sure enough, she ended up across the way from me. She was kind of like diagonally across from me at this table. So I sit down with my tray and immediately she starts talking to me. She's like, how are you feeling today, Jessica? How, how are you feeling? How's the baby feeling? And then she says to someone else, we're like family. 
I was hormonal. I was having a really bad day. I was very, very frustrated. I did not have the patience for that that day. So she said, oh, we're like family. Her daughter's my stepdaughter. And I, I slammed my tray down, you guys. And I stood up and I said, you are not family. My daughter is not your stepdaughter. You are baby daddy's dope ho. You are fucking him for meth. You say anything to me ever again, we're gonna have a problem. And I stood there for a second. This was, this was angry Jessica. She didn't say anything and everyone else that she was with in this Christian program barracks is just like, whoa. So I grab my tray, I walk it up, I slam it down and I walk back to my barracks. I sat down on my rack and I just thought, you really had to lose your temper in the chow hall in front of everyone. Like I was just beating myself up. I didn't want to be like that. That's why I held it in for so many weeks. I didn't want to scream at her. I didn't want to put that out there. I didn't want to be that person, but I could only take so much. And she just kept baiting me and I, I just snapped. You know, it was very difficult for me to deal with that because like I said, when I was in county jail, I met a lot of girls that he hooked up with. Women wouldn't even come up to me and say, did you know I hooked up with your baby daddy? And it's like, Thank you. You know, so it just was a really big, it was a really big deal to me. It hurt my, it hurt my ego, it hurt my pride. I was very loyal to a man that was not loyal to me at all. I was very lo loyal to a person who did not give a crap about me. So it has been seven years since all of that and my feelings towards him do not matter. I do what is in the best interest of my daughter. And because I gave him my word all those years ago when I was pregnant in prison, that I would keep him updated. Every single month I send him pictures of Micah. He's allowed to have five pictures a month and that is what I send him. Every 90 days or so I'll write him a letter and I will update him on our daughter. That is the only communication that we have. And as of right now, I'm completely fine with that. He seems to be completely fine with that. He does get out in December of this year. And we'll just kind of see how it goes. You know, if he wants to video chat with her or call he is very welcome. He is more than welcome to do that as long as he's doing the right thing. Um, Reese and I will support him and we will do what is in the best interest of my daughter. That is always a prim primary goal, but I just want you guys to think about that before you break the law, before you run around doing drugs and acting crazy. Think about this. Think about going to prison. You have to be around people that you have no control over. They, they don't say, oh, who would you like to be locked up with in intake? No, they throw you in general population with everyone else and you just gotta deal with it. So it's a really tough thing about prison, but honestly it taught me patience and as horrible as prison is, as traumatizing as having a baby in prison was, I'm grateful for that because I looked inward and I saw all of the flaws that I had. I saw that I didn't wanna be that person anymore. And the way that I figured out who I wanted to be was by first figuring out who I didn't wanna be. And I did not wanna be that angry, dysfunctional drug addict that will punch you at the drop of a hat, that will lose her temper and throw things. I didn't wanna be that person. And by process of elimination, I've been able to become the person that I am today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this story time. I love you all. Stay safe, stay sober, do not break the law, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.